What makes the images we see in our favorite films feel alive? You could say it's the light, the acting and the composition and the movement and uh, the overall story. And that's obviously right, but to an extent. Why sometimes we feel like uh, today's feature films or TV shows lack something? The image quality and the lights and the color is all there and uh, perfect, but it just doesn't feel real. For me, I think it all comes down to imperfection. The movies we grew up watching were never really perfect, technically or image-wise. The lenses were not clinically sharp and provided a lot of artifacts, and shooting on film made the image look a certain imperfect way. This is what's called analog right now, and many cinematographers and directors of today's movies understand that and uh, try to replicate the old feeling. For example, the latest Batman was shot on detuned uh, anamorphic lenses, which uh, gave a less sharp image and uh, less contrasty image, and even used Helios and Jupiter lenses for the car chase uh, with the Penguin. Hi guys, my name is Kostya and uh, recently I became a beta tester for the Dehancer Pro plugin for Final Cut Pro X and I remember uh, reading about them developing it uh, like two years back uh, and honestly I didn't think that they would pull through and uh, actually release it. It was a long wait and I think it was worth it. Everybody in the industry knows that uh, Enhancer Pro is a plugin that DaVinci Resolve users and colorists have had in their arsenal for many years and uh, achieved great results with it. And finally, us Final Cut Pro folks have it too. Enhancer is great for a lot of stuff, but my favorite thing about it is not uh, the one-stop shop feature of color grading from the beginning to the end. It's uh, making like finishing touches uh, make that final pop to the picture so everything shines and feels more organic and uh, film-like. So you know there are a lot of color grading suites out there and most of them focus on making some sort of film emulation and uh, adding some LUTs, uh, working with exposure, contrast, temperature, all that stuff. It's all good and great for making like a base grade, uh, so you can look at the footage and see what it's capable of, but for me it's just an eye candy and it doesn't make me feel anything inside, uh, it doesn't touch my heart, you know. <laughs> So why did the Hanser look became so famous in the industry? I think that's because of the other stuff they added on top of uh, what you normally expect. That's blooming of highlights, halation artifacts uh, and uh, one of the best grains you can find. Uh, someone told me that their technology for making a grainy picture is like reconstructing the whole picture with grain. And that's why it sometimes works uh, slower than just simply putting a grain overlay above your image. Also, there are some film projection features like uh, the gate weave and the film breath, uh, which uh, I change uh, the exposure a little bit, emulating how the film roll uh, is projected uh, with the light behind it. It's not always like uh, constant in exposure, uh, it flickers and the film moves a little bit, so it's not uh, static, even if it's a tripod shot. It actually like wobbles and moves uh, from side to side. It's hardly noticeable, but it's great to have if you want that look. And it's all very customizable in every little aspect and can be fine-tuned to your exact needs.
first uh, when you get all these uh, great tools in your hands uh, it's really easy to overdo the effect and crank the intensity of all of the stuff really high so you get like an over processed look uh, but uh, when a little time passes and you play with it uh, you start to feel the balance of how it should be and how to not overdo it and the next step is uh, to plan ahead uh, when you shoot uh, for this stuff to be added so for example if you are shooting some uh, portrait shots you plan and uh, place some highlights like uh, street uh, neon signs and street lights uh, in the frame so that can be uh, an accent with the bloom later try to plan for it and uh, not just edit in post uh, think about what you want to do with your picture beforehand and also with this review I uploaded uh, six more videos uh, with different uh, styles and genres that I had used Dehancer on and in some of them there is a download link for the original uncompressed version so you can see the grain and uh, the original quality and stuff if you like. Before we get to some of my examples and uh, trying the software I want to point out that I'm in no way like a Hollywood uh, a DP or colorist. Uh, I've been filming stuff for almost 15 years now and it's my primary job and uh, my great passion but I in no way pretend to be like a super pro uh, who knows everything. I'm just learning as you guys do hopefully and uh, for me having fun with the journey of becoming better and uh, making stuff uh, look uh, greater and feeling greater is far more important. Also I'm really into anamorphic as you can see not many YouTube people uh, shoot their talking head stuff with an anamorphic manual lens it's so hard but I think it's worth it. All of the stuff I've shown you and will be testing the enhancer on was shot by me on my Sony a7S III in S-Log3 profile with s gamma 3 Cine uh, Gamma with details uh, set to minus 7 all in 4K, 4 to 2, 10 bits uh, if you want to know the exact settings. Uh, I shot it on Ciro uh, 50mm full frame anamorphic lens with uh, 1.6 uh, squeeze factor and uh, the aperture of T2.9. It's a great lens and I'm shooting myself with it right now because I love it that much. So let's take a look at the footage. The first shot I have uh, was shot in S-Log as I said and let's uh, just use Dehancer as a default. It's uh, uh, in the effects browser under film emulation and it's called Dehancer Pro. And when we pull it over the footage it looks horrible. <laughs> you want to close it immediately but all you have to do is just set it up. So first uh, we select the source, we choose a camera. Uh, I use Sony, the A7S III, and this shot was shot in S-Log3 as Gamma 3 Cine on ISO, I think it was at 12,800. Uh, if you choose 640, it's not that big of a difference, uh, choose whatever you like. So as you can see, the footage already looks uh, gorgeous and uh, you can export it right now. So that's uh, the color space transform function. You can uh, work with exposure, with temperature, as you like. Uh, this shot was uh, shot uh, correct, I think, uh, so it doesn't need it. Uh, the tint compensation also. So the next is a film profile. By default it's Kodak Vision 3 uh, 250D. So with it and without it. Uh, I like this look, uh, you can work uh, with the uh, exposure a little bit uh, with the film. I'll add just a little bit so the shadows are not that crushed. There are plenty of other film profiles here, you can choose whatever you like uh, when you do your grading. This one looks uh, more natural to me. Uh, next you can work with the black point and with the white point. 
After this, uh, we go to print, and again, this is exposure. Uh, a good instrument uh, called uh, tonal contrast, uh, which works amazing on uh, daylight shots with uh, lots of detail in the shadows. Also, here you can find color density, uh, which, uh, in my opinion, works uh, better than the simple saturation. Next, I think it's called uh, cross-process. It's when you develop the film uh, with uh, wrong chemicals. It gives uh, some kind of stylized look, uh, if you like uh, this sort of thing. And we are moving to film grain. So this is the film grain. It's uh, really, really customizable in size and amount and all of the stuff. Uh, for this shot, I don't think I need a lot of grain, so this amount uh, suits me perfectly. And next is halation. It's turned off uh, by default, so you have to first enable it. And if you pull this, the local diffusion, you can see where the halation is more prominent. So you can work with it. I think uh, about this amount is uh, great. And as you can see, uh, many lenses have halation by itself. So this is without halation, you can already see it. And this is with halation added. So next uh, we have the bloom effect, which is also turned off by default. Let me turn it on. As you can see, this is what uh, most people are looking for uh, when they use Dehancer. It's also really, really customizable. Uh, how you want it to look, uh, how soft or hard the effect is, and overall impact. Uh, you can fine-tune it for hours uh, to get the look you want. I think a subtle look uh, like this, uh, which mostly works uh, on these uh, lights and a little bit on this side of the head, uh, is great for me. Also, it uh, softens some shadows on the face, which I like also. Next we have the vignette. Uh, it's self-explanatory. If you want like a, uh, an accent on the center of the frame, you can use it. Maybe just a little bit. And uh, th these last two are uh, for uh, emulating uh, the projection of the film when it moves and when it shifts exposure. For this static shot, I don't think we need it. So this is uh, color grading done with Dehancer Pro. Let's turn it off and let's turn it on. I think the result uh, speaks for itself. Uh, it's a great plugin which you can use solely and you can do all of the grading inside this plugin if you want to. Let's move to the next shot, this one. And in here uh, I used uh, my technique of working. Uh, so I have a color board uh, before uh, Dehancer. Uh, which I used for shifting the colors a little bit, uh, shifting the saturation a little bit and the exposure. It's a base tool in Final Cut Pro, which I really like. Uh, also here I used uh, another film profile, uh, the Ektachrome uh, E100, uh, which gives uh, like a vintage look, in my opinion looks great. And on this shot you can uh, see the halation and the bloom really good. So maybe like this, yeah. So the face is in the shot too. So this is halation. You can see right here when I turn it on or off there was none and now there is. And it looks really amazing and really natural. Uh, also the bloom, there was a little bit of bloom like right here uh, and in other places but uh, with this bloom turned on it's like on another level and I like it a lot. And after using Dehancer sometimes I use another LUT just with the basic tool, the custom LUT in Final Cut, uh, just to make the footage a little bit more stylized. So this is the Kodak Ultramax 400 for film contrast. It makes uh, the picture warmer. Uh, 
and uh, for me it's more of a vintage look and I like it but it's not really that big of a difference so this is the next shot the same uh, technique uh, I used uh, the same ectochrome profile uh, more or less everything is the same and uh, I used color board before to brighten the picture and make it greener and after the enhancer I used another lot like 50% and it makes it uh, a lot more greener which I like it's like a stylized film look a moody picture and for me this looks great so on this shot I wanted to demonstrate the effect of the mist filter on the camera versus of uh, just adding bloom uh, in post in the enhancer. This is the picture with the mist filter and this one without it. So as you can see uh, right here there are some effects uh, that can't be uh, achieved uh, in post or at least it's really really hard and it's better to get them uh, in camera. That's why I use those filters. So without it you can see the hair is uh, like more or less normal contrasty and right here we have a beautiful glow that uh, shines over the hair and it's really hard to emulate this effect also the overall contrast uh, of the picture is lower which i also like but uh, you can work with contrast uh, in post but the optical effects of the diffusion are uh, really hard to uh, recreate in post. So right here, as you can see, we have the bloom effect turned on and it helps a lot, but uh, it won't give you all of the stuff the real mist filter does, definitely. So next is uh, a daylight shot. I think it's really beautiful. Uh, we have uh, the enhancer, the color board, and in the enhancer I have the film emulation turned off uh, because I wanted a natural look. But this shot is really great to demonstrate the tonal contrast, which I have uh, at 8, so this is like 0, and this is 8. You can push it a little bit more if you like. So like maybe 9 or 10, it's great. And the color density, which works uh, with the warmer colors more and uh, leaves uh, the green uh, mostly alone. Just a little bit of shift in the green. Also, this shot is great to demonstrate the bloom effect. This is no bloom effect and that, that's a lot of bloom so it's a look if you like it you like it uh, I like it a lot because it's like glowing and it's like majestic uh, I don't know how to describe it also you can see how the halation works uh, without uh, some street lights so here is before and after and I did it like uh, really exaggerated uh, because I want the viewer to feel that the sun is really really bright and it's like uh, almost burning uh, and I think the halation helps a lot with this kind of feeling so next shot is like a static tripod shot uh, so it doesn't move and here you can see how the last uh, two effects uh, film effects work the film breath and the gate weave I have it turned on the film breath uh, will shift the exposure a little bit uh, like when it's projected uh, and the gate weave will shake the footage a little bit also I added a little bit of film dust uh, over the footage uh, so it looks more like film so here is the effect with the film dust Let's zoom a little bit, like maybe on this side. And you can see the shake and the exposure shifts uh, better. So if you need it, you can find it here. And another example of using these features is making like uh, an old film with a lot of shake and a lot of exposure shifts and grain. Uh, I also added a film dust layer. Uh, I found like free on YouTube and also I added uh, 
a frame over the footage and some film burn so I can make a really harsh cut in the footage and it looks like something from a Tarantino movie so this is how it looks and I think it works great and we haven't talked about the grain so here I have uh, another shot and this is the shot without the grain so it looks uh, clean and this is the shot with the grain so it looks like this let's play it really natural and this is the same shot with the same grain and we have an overlay of black and white grain so here's how it looks and we can zoom in and see and uh, I don't really like it so it's uh, the same pattern and it's uh, moving really weird and the footage is really sharp and the edges are really sharp and uh, right here you can see that the edges are a little bit softer because of the grain and the grain is more random not so uniform so I prefer the dehancer grain over some overlay grain any day of the week and the final thing I wanted to show you is the export lot uh, button so when you do your grade if you work like with the director or another person who does the edit you can uh, export a lot for them and this one is Dehancer S-Log3 S-Gamma3 Cine the ISO and the stylized uh, uh, film and uh, he can look uh, at the footage as you're looking at it so it's not like a log profile and it looks more or less like you see it that's a handy tool to have if you work in a team and uh, the other person can use the LUT with just a basic LUT uh, function and doesn't need to have the answer at all that's really great so really quick I wanted to talk about the pros and cons of uh, Dehancer. For me the main uh, pro is uh, that it has a lot of functionality that isn't in any other software. It can really push your footage uh, to the direction that uh, you want, the filmic uh, look, the organic look and that's a big plus. Uh, the second plus is that it's all inside of Final Cut, you don't have to use another software and it, it makes your uh, color grading a lot faster. Uh, the third pro for me is that uh, this is a well-known software that's been developed uh, for many years and uh, they always add a lot of new optimizations and functionality so you can expect this software to have a lot of new stuff in the future and there aren't many cons for me the first one right now is uh, that it's uh, not natively supported by uh, m1 and m2 max it's uh, working through rosetta which is uh, slower you can't get real time right now but i think it won't be long till they add the native support of the m1 max uh, and the second uh, con for me is that uh, it's not really about dehancer it's uh, some sort of bug in the latest mac os and uh, maybe final cut uh, which uh, stops uh, some heavy plugins uh, from working and sometimes even crashes for me it's when i use like uh, noise reduction software the motion blur software and sometimes dehancer but in final cut it's no big deal you just uh, launch it again in two seconds and continue without losing any progress so it's not a big deal that's it for the pros and cons and also there are some things I wish were added to Dehancer in the future. The first one is a distortion function, like a pin cushion, like you get on anamorphics. The second one is film dust and scratches, which would really be nice. The third one is some sort of chromatic aberrations, uh, 
like on the sides of the footage. The next is partial softness, like uh, you get on anamorphics uh, when you're really close. And you get a lot of softness, uh, like on the top and bottom borders of the frame. And uh, the final thing is uh, overlays, uh, some sort of uh, 8mm or 16mm overlays, which could push the film look even further. Uh, if they add it, uh, that would be nice. But I do most of this stuff already, just with other tools and my own collection of footage and stuff. So it's not a big deal. For me, the biggest indication or if the software works or not uh, for me is uh, two factors. Uh, first, uh, how I feel uh, while using it. Uh, do I enjoy the process because that's uh, really important for any sort of creative work. And the second is the feedback uh, from my clients and colleagues uh, and I got both from uh, testing the Dehancer beta for the last uh, almost two months. Uh, a lot of people told me that uh, my stuff became more filmic and look uh, like an advertisement or a music video when I was just shooting some tests uh, and uh, having fun with it. That's definitely a factor for me to use this software in the future. So I can highly recommend using Dehancer if you want to make your footage uh, less digital and more unique and your way. Just remember that real beauty is never perfect. The real beauty is always in all of the imperfections. Also, you can use my code uh, PROSNIKOV uh, if you want to get a 10% discount for Dehancer. Uh, just use it on checkout on their site, dehancer.com. And don't forget to like, subscribe and leave comments down there with your questions about my footage and process or Dehancer. I'll be gladly answering those. That's it. Thanks. Bye.